from TechSoft 3D. I'm the technical marketing manager here, and I'm joined today with uh, by Peter Hoffman. I'm the product manager for yeah, and, and we're really excited to talk with you today about Oops Communicator 2016. So thank you so much for joining our webinar. Um, we have a number of people in it. So right now we're going to mute the lines just so um, everybody can, can hear the presentation and take a look at our technology. If you have a question, um, feel free to, to ask it in the, the question pane. And then there's also going to be an opportunity at the end of the presentation uh, to entertain as many as you want. Uh, or you can contact us directly and we'll have that that contact information for you. But again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we just came out with our Hoops Communicator 2016 release. And uh, here at TechSoft, we're really driven to fuel innovation with unmatched 3D technology for all of our partners in the engineering, construction, uh, analysis space. And, and this release of Hoops Communicator really is, is no exception uh, to that. And we're, we're excited to, to talk about that today. So this is meant to be a somewhat informal presentation about our technology. We're going to be showing it to you, talking about exactly what it is, um, what Hoops Communicator is for those who aren't familiar with it, um, some very specifics about our most recent release, the 2016 release. We'll look at it in a couple different scenarios. So we'll have a, a live demonstration and then some time for questions. So what is Hoops Communicator? Well, it's, it's a web technology, cloud and web uh, technology that allows you to take CAD data, or data in general, not just CAD, but construction data, and convert it to a form that is highly efficient in being transferred down to a browser and viewed within a zero client uh, browser app that can run in all of your major browsers not just on desktop and laptops, but also uh, on all of your major mobile devices. So it's, it's Android and iOS enabled. In addition to getting your 3D, 3D data down to a client for easy viewing and interaction, we also provide a very rich framework that allows you to connect your, your 3D objects to additional business intelligence. So when you, your user clicks on something, um, you can have code behind that goes out and queries a database or, or executes some specific action um, and integrates within your, your existing workflows. And then something that we're really focused on this year uh, with, with this release and also moving forward, as, as with all of our products, it's, it's all about performance. Models are getting much bigger. Um, and so we need to have a set of tools that are scalable and high performance with the larger models that we're seeing in larger assemblies. And then also new to this, this release is a rich data authoring API. So even though many people are used to using their, their own CAD files and, and they're, they're getting that, um, there is also a need to connect it directly to a system that might not have a, a standard uh, file that would need to be converted. So there is this API that allows you to take whatever geometry you have and convert it into a streamable form that can be then viewed um, on your, your client. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, the, when it comes to the offering, that includes also things like the assembly structure, the, everything that's uh, relevant for measurement information, so a subset of the VWF data. So it, it, it goes beyond just the geometry. It, it uh, allows you to really generate a model that has all the capabilities as if the model was came directly from the CAD system. And so some of the things we've really been working on uh, here for the 2016 release are performance and scalability. And so one of the components we've added is the ability to stream data from the server down to the client and immediately start viewing uh, the data that exists already in the client. So you don't have to download the whole model and then start interacting. So it's immediate interaction uh, with your data. There's the ability to prioritize the data that gets sent down so the most important objects are, are viewed first and can be interacted with. Uh, benefit of that is you can have really massive models and be able to, to view them very easily, even in a very thin uh, environment on, on your client. 
And then looking at scalability, so being able to offer your data, bring data together. So maybe you have models that exist in, in uh, different assemblies and you want, to, you want to bring that together or work in a shattered mode where you, you have a delayed load of a particular uh, sub-assembly or you're bringing together um, models even from different CAD systems and being able to uh, aggregate that and change that or do revision control. So all of that scalability is really built, built into this, this current release. And then the ability to, to now customize um, the application. So not just have a 3D viewer, but really put it within a, a much richer environment. So let's, let's take, a, take a look at uh, what Hoops Communicator is, is able to do. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is, is load a, a model. It's uh, 600 megabytes in size and has uh, just close to a, a thousand parts. And we wanted to show you the ability to, to load this and be able to stream it into the client and immediately start interacting with it. So uh, even though this, this model does take uh, a minute or so to load, I can, I can come in and I can walk up the uh, assembly tree and I can isolate parts, and I can work with the metadata associated with that part. Um, I can interact with the model, and it just allows me to start working with it, even though not all the data um, is, is available yet. And that works, works well. Here on my, my laptop, I'm um, connected to a server I, I'm located here at our engineering offices in Berkeley, California. This is being streamed in from um, a server, an Amazon server that's hosting it uh, in Virginia. So 3,000 miles away, we're able to get pretty, pretty decent interaction. Uh, but what if I have a, a device that isn't capable of loading this into its, its uh, video memory? Uh, we, we have quite good performance being able to rotate this and get 30 or 50 frames a second. Um, I'm not sure what you're able to see on the other side of, of, of GoToWebinar, uh, but here I can get 30 or, or 50 frames, and, and it's, yeah, I have a, a test PC here, and you're getting maybe three frames. Um, but we encourage you to check out our our recording of that um, uh, recording of this when we're through. But again, what what happens if I have a, a mobile device and I want to? I want to load the same model and view it. Well, this, the same server is enabled with a GPU, and I can load that model, and I don't have to stream it down to the client. I just load it in the video memory of my server and then stream down uh, an image to the client. And so now the, the memory footprint on, on my machine is, is minimal, and I get reasonably good performance. It, uh, as I interact with it, I uh, stream down a low-resolution image. When I stop interacting with it, now we're, we're able to um, get the full-resolution image. Yeah, and just to, just to follow up on that, so it's, it's client-side rendering in a lot of cases, which has the benefit of, you know, of using the client hardware and, and can give really good performance. Or at any time, you can switch to SSR. And the way that it's implemented is it requires basically no extra work uh, on the user side. So all the APIs, all the, all the code that is written around the viewer stays the same. And, you know, have the choice basically to choose between uh, client-side rendering or server-side rendering and for, for really large models or for devices which simply don't support like uh, VecGL in, in the browser. And that's that's really nice. If you're going to be developing an application, you want to support both the streaming of the geometry down to your clients or and uh, be able to support this server-side rendering and streaming down just an image. It really requires very little additional development effort on your part. You get both of those um, available to you. Right. Just, just to kind of follow that. So, of course, you know, it is hot. It requires hardware on the server. So there is a trade-off there that you have to make. You know, you have to maintain more high-end server, server machines or, or, or deploy them via Amazon. And so it's a decision you can make. Uh, and it's really up to you. We just give you the flexibility to implement these. And the, um, even though we are hosting this on an Amazon server, uh, it can be hosted locally within the firewall of, of 
your own infrastructure or your customer's infrastructure. So it's not required that you have it um, hosted with us. We're here at TechSoft. We're in the business of making compelling 3D technology. We're not in, in the business of, of hosting um, services for um, unique end users. But we have a, a set of demos that, that we're able to, to spin up and, and, and show you this technology. And just, just to add that, we, we are not providing any hosted technology. So it's up to you, either using Amazon or any other cloud provider or, or implementing essentially your own hardware, uh, have your own server running. That's, it's, 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 not an, it's not like a service. It's, it's an actual product that you would that with your responsibility to run and install. Yeah. So, um, uh, we have a couple questions. Emmanuel asks, what do we categorize as a massive model? Um, a massive model would be 100 million triangles is what we would categorize as a massive model. Uh, what we just saw was about 30 million triangles. And so we can, we can take that car and replicate it 25 times. We can consider that a massive model. Um, we, we are able to do that within, um, within this framework as well. This, this model itself here, this is uh, several million triangles as well. And, and we're, we're talking about uh, tens of, of thousands of, of parts. Okay. So just, just to kind of pull up on that a little bit. So yeah, massive models mean really, really big data sets. That doesn't mean that all those massive models will necessarily be able to, to run on a low-end hardware device unless you're using the server set renderer and have the hardware on the server. I think our, our WebGL solution is able to handle really large models very well. It's very efficient when it comes to memory footprint and, and has all kind, of, uh, all kind of tricks behind the scenes to really maintain good frame rate, good performance with very large data. But, you know, there's a limit to what you can do on the, unless you're running on the, on the server side rendering environment. And so we, we scale all the way up to really the largest models with hundreds of millions or more triangles and, and really almost a million cars. Uh, at that point, you know, you're probably looking on the server-side rendering solution. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Philip mentioned that we only see two frames a second, and that's a, that's a problem with the go-to webinar streaming. We get 30, 30 to 50 frames a second, and um, we'll give you a, a link on, uh, after this webinar where you can take it for a drive yourself. Uh, and then... Another question, how is it licensed? Well, we, we give you the SDK. It's a, it's a toolkit, and there's a very simple uh, yearly fee or quarterly fee plus a set of royalties, and it really depends on your business model. We can talk with you more about that. We got 50 different people from 50 different companies, and we just want to make sure that the technology works for you, and, and we'll talk about the business case and making sure that that works for everybody as well. Uh, Li Ming asks, Hi, Li Ming, does it support Step AP? 242, yes it does. And how scalable is the WebGL viewer compared to the desktop? We're seeing very good performance with WebGL compared to the desktop. You know, uh, under the hood, our rendering engine is actually built in C++ and then uh, compiled to JavaScript with a tool that's called mscript. And so we are, we are really taking like maximum advantage of, of, of the browser and the capabilities to optimize the JavaScript. And, so in general, you, you will see compared to, to your desktop application, the performance difference is, 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 is not great. And in fact, it might actually be better depending on how you implemented your scene graph and, uh, and yeah, what, what kind of system we're talking about. So yeah, I, so I think we are, we are doing pretty well compared to desktop applications. Yeah. Um, in addition, one of the things we've really been working on is, as Guido mentioned, this engineering-specific kernel this graphics kernel that we've, we've built out, um, it's not based on any existing technology. It's something that we've developed in here and how it's here at TechSoft 3D. We have 20 years of experience developing graphics kernels. Uh, many of you are familiar with, with Hoops Visualize, which powers over uh, 250 unique engineering applications and has over 15 million installs on systems uh, ranging from um, mining visualization to mechanical CAD to uh, electrical engineering, shipbuilding, um, construction, and uh, we just we have experience doing that. We've 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 adapted that and, and those lessons learned to being able to build this this highly efficient C++ kernel that runs on a server or also within a client in JavaScript. 
and by having that experience and knowing the workflows of our customers, this set of tools also includes what you would expect in um, a toolkit that you would use for engineering. So there's a whole redline engine as well as a dimensioning engine. Um, let me isolate this part. Uh, even though the data that streams down to the client or the data that sits on the server is, is visualization information, we also embed, if it exists in the original, the original file, the, the boundary representation, so the actual lines, arcs, planes, and cylinders uh, can be turned on or off, so we aren't required to. If that's your intellectual property, you don't want that out of being available on the web. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you can add this exact measurement. Even though these, these are triangulated surfaces, I can pull out the exact measurement data from, from those objects. Uh, so I have arc data, I have uh, edge data, I can do if I wanted to point to point, so I can grab two points, or if I also wanted to, I could do face to face. Here I have parallel face information. And so that is, again, taking from the BREP that exists in mechanical CAD data and exposing the, the needed information in a very highly, highly streamable form that allows you to make these exact measurements. Um, there's there's a, a question, do you have level of detail for mesh data for large models to be displayed on mobile devices instead of the server-side rendering solution? Yeah, let me answer that. So currently, so that, that is on the, on the current roadmap for this year. It's, it's not in the, in the system right now, but that is something that is planned for, for, uh, for our next release in, at, the, at the end or middle around summer. So I think July, August, I think it's just planned for that. That will include like a level of detail engine that allows you to either extract the level of detail information that might already be in the CAD model or to generate a level of detail yourself. And those are exactly as described in the question. On a low-end device, in a mobile device, for example, you, you can choose then to, to only stream like a, a low detail representation of the data over. Or in the streaming case, it will start with a low detail and then stream in more high-resolution measures later. Right. Uh, so also we have this bi-directional selection between your 3D scene and the model browser, so I can select objects in either of those, and that then um, creates a callback that you can connect into, and then from that either show property information with, within the file that you've streamed down, or then go out and query uh, your own database and display that within your own properties window. So this, this whole interface here is all um, just the skin that TechSoft has made. We, we give you the, the canvas that the 3D data sits in, and you can skin it any way you want, so you're not bound to our, our interface by any means. So what, what handles rendering in the browser? Okay, so uh, Todd asks, what handles rendering in the browser? So in this case, uh, we're utilizing WebGL on the client side, and then the server side, how smart is the browser side rendering engine? Uh, well, you know, it's the same rendering, again, the server and client use the same rendering and the host, and I'm not sure what you mean by smart, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's relatively sophisticated in that, it, you know, it's, it's handling the uh, display will be a subset of the model, it, it has all these, it does all kinds of performance things under the hood, really utilizing WebGL to, to its full potential. And it, as you see, you know, if you, if you can maybe go back to that original model and do some picking uh, on the data. No, no, just, just the same model. It just do, uh, uh, go back to the, the whole model. I wanted to show that. Uh, but when it comes to picking, for example, we do like a very efficient overdraw highlighting so you get a sub, you can, as you rotate and see, and you, you can still see an overdraw outline of the data. All that, you know, that, that gives us performance. And so even if you're a large model, not only does it display fast and render fast and, and come up after a few seconds, when you, when you do any type of operation, it's like picking or changing or moving things around, that will happen very quickly as well. Yeah, so we're, we're utilizing um, best practices when it comes to visualization. So um, we, we use the, the native hardware, the graphics hardware available on the system. So using WebGL, we're, we're able to shader accelerate all of our algorithms. Um, 
So it's, it's very high performance. Okay. Um, let's let's see. Other questions. The server side component do the render render install optimization. Is that done in the browser? No, it's it's done in both cases. So I think again, the engine utilizes OpenGL ES on the server or or WebGL on the client. But in both cases, it'll take advantage of the hardware as as, as much as possible. Are you rendering NURBS directly in WebGL? No. No. So, no. so NURBS are getting, going to get tessellated out and then rendered just like I have shown you. All right. So we saw a couple different assemblies. Uh, one other tool that we have that we're using um, is the ability to extract product manufacturing information um, from the original CAD file. So we're going to we're going to bring in a CATIA file here, and this includes a number of PMI views that we can isolate. They're part of our model browser. We give you access to that. So uh, under the hood of Hoops Communicator is one of our our numerous engineering toolkits called Hoops Exchange, and this is something that again uh, we have a lot of experience in reading CAD data. So we have a lot of experience reading. CATIA data. Um, it's not using a connection to CATIA, but a reverse engineer of the file format. This is, again, something that powers hundreds of engineering applications in the market today, and there's millions of seats using it. Uh, but here we have a CATIA part with a number of, of PMI views, and that PMI information uh, is brought in, in in two different ways. So, so we accurately are able to display that visually to so the PMI. We have visual PMI that's being rendered exactly the way it looks in CATIA, but additionally, uh, we have access to the semantic PMI, and so if you want to parse that within your own workflow, you're, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Uh, and we, for all the major CAD systems where PMI exists, we're able to, to bring that in and give you access to that. So I can cycle through my different views. I can add my own views if I want to. I can have it uh, activate a view with within the interface if, if I wanted to as, as well. Just to, just to kind of uh, uh, add to that, so it's currently in the, in the release that, so we have communicated that came out in February, we have an updated release that's coming out in uh, very early next month, April, uh, and, uh, and there you will also be able to highlight, to, to pick PMI, for example, and, and highlight the, the corresponding faces or edges associated to the PMI. So I think it's, it's all the, the rich data connected to the PMI element is maintained and, and is available in the browser as well. And uh, another question uh, came, what kind of output files? Yeah, um, thanks, Li Ming. So we, we can output 3D PDF. So in addition to creating this web viewable form, um, this, this streaming cache that we're able to push down to the client, you do have the ability to output rich 3D PDFs with your own templates. If you want to embed view rep information, you can. It can be just visualized based if you want it to be. So very intelligent 3D PDF. You can also output a, a variety of, of uh, PNG images if you want to use those for, for off-screen rendering or for thumbnails. You can output a, a, a depth as another format. You know, so, you, so this all happens on the server, of course. It's not directly in the browser. So you will, you will basically kick off a process on the server that will then uh, write out uh, that kind of PDF or any other example of a lot of the other standard formats, basically. And then uh, additionally, you can write out an FTL. So if you, know, yeah. you, want to, you want to output that for 3D printing, and we have people that are, that are using that. You can also, in addition to have Hoops Communicator running on your server, you can pair that with Hoops Exchange. So that's our native um, CAD file reading and, and writing toolkit. So you then get the ability to write out Parasolid XT data, uh, ASUS SAT data, uh, as well as JT, uh, STEP, IGIS, uh, and a number of other standards. Can you, um, another question, can you open multiple models for comparison? Yes. Yes, you can. Well, I, so I, I'm not sure. If, if the question is ESL, can we have multiple model on the client, on the, on the server side rendering, brought in together into the same viewer, then yes, we can do that. So that's it. 
that's all possible. You can you can combine models together. You can you can move you can bring them in and then move them to a different position. All that is available via the API, right? Um, here's now we're just looking at a very basic viewer. So how would you now integrate this with your workflow? So here we have uh, an assembly that might be connected to an inventory management system. So if I if I click on a part, it would go off to this inventory management system and ask for information like, well, how much does this cost, or how much of, of this particular part is in stock uh, from from this vendor. So you can tag it by vendor. So we have all of all of the uh, different parts that, that may be part of this this model. I can bring them all in. I have my my tires if I wanted to look at those, and I can select on it. It gives me the price as well as the the number of units in stock. All of this can be um, connected to a live system, so it doesn't have to be embedded in the file, but it's going off to an external database. Or if I wanted to, I can look at that data in a different way. For instance, what if I wanted to see just my expensive parts? So it's, it's part, of, part of the engine. is everything over $70 or so. Or if I wanted to filter in a different way, uh, give me every, everything I have very low inventory of. So these are things maybe I'd have to go out and request more, more from my vendor so that I can have a, enough stock if it's of interest to me. And just to, just to elaborate on that, so basically what, what we are providing to you is not the business logic, of course. That's something we are providing the connections and the ability to very quickly identify which part in, inside the graphic system belongs to a part within your, your business logic. Within the, basically tying it back to the original cut data. And then you can do with that information whatever you want. Again, that, that could be yeah, applying these kind of attributes, this kind of stock information to, to the model, or anything else that you, that you want to do. Right. So here's a, another example of connecting it to your own workflow. We've been looking at a lot of mechanical data. Here's some architectural data attached to this. This, this file originally came from um, an IFC model. So that can have a lot of metadata embedded within it. And here I can step through and I can isolate maybe just a few floors that may be of interest to me. So here's, here's one particular floor. I can uh, select on a, one of those objects and, and the data that existed in the, the IFC file, all that metadata that you're able to bring in. If I want to, I could add multiple floors and then say, well, why don't you show me just the structural data for this for this particular um, set of of floors. So here now we've removed every everything else. So you can you can slice and dice your data different ways. If you want to, you can you can look at it in a very specific way that that meets your your specific workflow. And so that was a, a brief overview of Hoops Communicator 2016. There's a lot of other bells and whistles in there, but we wanted to show you the performance, the scalability, your ability to connect it to your own workflows, um, and then a, a strong foundation for the future. So here now, we're, we'd like to open it up to any, any questions. So we've got a couple questions here. Uh, so yeah, I can I can take the first one. So how uh, I was wondering how Spec was compatible with the 2016 release with the older versions of Communicator that is for files and markup generated say with 2015 SP1 release. So the answer to that is it's not really backwards compatible. So the format has completely changed, uh, in particular the, the geometry format, but also in a, in a less, to lesser extent the, all that extra XML or JSON data that we generated for the old. Um, for the markup and redlining information. So the, so we're not really, so there's no uh, direct upgrade path to, to go from the old to the new, but it should be fairly straightforward. The API, while it has changed, has fundamentally followed the same principles. So, uh, so upgrading from 2015 to 2016 should be possible, but you really need to reconvert all your existing data to the new format. Right. Um, part of the 2016 release, Tim, is, is an upgrade guide that kind of steps you through that. Uh, upgrading the the tech on the server and in the the, the client window um, that that also is, is gone through there as well. And we're, we'll be happy to work with you um, on on that. So 
So got some more questions. Can you can you do can you do selection hit testing at the same level of granularity as in the desktop? So basically, yes. So you, you, you can just so selection is not just selecting a part, but you can select individual faces within a part. The, the individual edge gives you the exact point where that you have selected on. So if, if people are familiar with the Hoops desktop uh, desktop engine, it's a very it, it follows a very similar concept. Uh, can you add other geometries to the model in real time? Yes, that's also possible. It's not it's it's not that it's not meant really as an as, an, as a system where you constantly bring in huge amounts of data dynamically from driven by you know inserting the actual meshes yourself, but you can certainly do that. It's, it's absolutely possible to invent additional mesh data on the fly. Yeah. Uh, do you guys render point clouds in the web viewer? So the E57, LAS, LAS formats, etc. Uh, we we do allow you to offer point data that we do render, but we're not doing anything particularly smart or special with it. Support for actual point clouds, for larger point clouds in particular, that is something that is on the roadmap, but there's no, uh, I can't really tell you anything more than that. Yeah, and we don't read those file formats natively, so we, we do read IFC and then all of your major mechanical CAD formats, um, but, but the formats you called out or the XYZ format specifically for point clouds, those are not supported in our reader, but there is this uh, architecture for you to connect your own logic to our, our, our conversion tool on the server. And so if, no doubt you can read those formats or there's, there's other toolkits that can very easily read those. And that can then be uh, very easily pushed into a, a viewable form. All right, so which, which format should we convert Visualize in Hoops Viewer, no more HWF. Yes, that will be accurate. No more HWF. So I think, I mean, you never did the conversion that's always running through Converter. Now, instead of HWF, Converter is spitting out a new, much, much, much improved format that, that, that deals with compression and has the data uh, generated in the right structure. So if you have HWF data, the path forward is to, con to, to reconvert that data, basically, back from the original CAD data. And those communicator server work on browsers that do not support WebGL. Uh, so right, so the, the client side rendering solution requires WebGL. So the answer would be no. The current release that is out there right now, even in the server side renderer, we have like a minimal WebGL requirement. So, but that will be listed in 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 an, in an update release later this year. So in the going forward, you will not require um, WebGL in the browser for, for server side rendering. Uh, because you're using WebSockets, you won't take advantage of browser caching. So a client visiting the same model two times will require to download the data again. Did you look look at HTTP transfers as well? Well, so so that is true. That So we, we are not directly caching the data anymore, but because we are streaming it, overall, I think it's, it's the performance will, it will of course be much better than the old solution. Uh, there is, we do have a fallback mode where you can actually generate a single HW file that is similar to the HWF format and that, that will be, that you can stream where via a simple HTTP or HTTPS request. But then, you, of course, you don't get this the capability to interactively stream, to leave data on the server, to dynamically bring in parts back and forth. There is, we, so we did look at, at, at using like a different approach using an HTTP level streaming that would require the data to be chopped up, but uh, that is just not as efficient as what we're doing right now. So I think, so we're taking that, that slight trade-off of not being able to use the browser caching, which by the way is limited. You know, if you bring in a lot of data, then the browser will eventually flush it out, and, and, and so the caching is kind of getting invalidated. But, but we feel that it's a, that's a very, uh, it's a good trade-off for what, what we're trying to do. Right. What, what's the difference between the Hoops Cloud Platform and Hoops Communicator? So what we've been showing you is is Hoops Communicator that includes a server-side uh, conversion tool that then can stream down to a client, uh, or do server-side rendering that then gives you an image to your your client viewer. It also includes the ability to translate um, to some standards like 3D PDF uh, and and STL. So that's Hoops Communicator. 
basically server tool and a web browser viewer. The Hoops Cloud Platform takes that a step further and it, it uses Hoops Communicator to trans, translate and your data, but allows you in addition to having just the, the browser viewer, you can then be creating native apps for mobile. And so let's say you, you wanted to have a native experience for your users, your own branded native app for iOS or for Android, you could you could use our tools to now build that so you don't have to be rendering within a browser, you can be render, rendering within your, your native app. And then to take that a step further, you, um, the, the cloud platform also has Hoops Exchange, so it's this very rich data exchange SDK that can also be run on your server. Um, and that gives you a lot more options in what you can output to choose. That would be like uh, Parasolid XT, ACES SAT, JT, STEP, and IGIS. Are you leveraging occlusion calling on the server, on the client? So the answer is no. And while I was not really supposed to talk much about our roadmap, we are looking, that is something that we are looking at currently. All right. Uh, can mobile devices use Hoops Communicator? So in general, yes. If it's, if it's a modern, if it's a modern uh, phone or a modern tablet that Ports WebGL, then absolutely you can you can use WebGL in the browser. That well, you can you can use your our viewer in in, in, the, in the native mobile browser, and it, it works very well. You just have to make sure that you provide, of course, like a, a, like a web like an HTML or JavaScript GUI layer that is that is appropriate for that format. But yes, All right. Does does Hoops Converter work with Revit files? Not currently. So the, the way it's implemented, you'd have to export an ISC file from Revit and then import that or use that for conversion within Hoops Communicator. There's a number of, of um, there's a lot of interest in, in that right now. And so we're kind of exploring ways to integrate tools that allow you to take native Revit files, but there's no nothing on the roadmap right now to, to support Revit in, in the, its native form. Yes. Uh, it's not in the media yeah. All right, well, this will be a, a last call for any questions, man. Fantastic question. Thank you so much, and thank you for your time. Um, feel free to reach out to both myself and to Guido. Uh, we're, we're more than happy to entertain things that, that uh, interest you. If you have very specific questions that might come to mind later, uh, you're also we would encourage you to go to uh, techsoft3d.com slash trial and, and there if you aren't already using Hoops Communicator, you can sign up for a 360 day evaluation of the toolkit itself. Um, we pair you up with a consulting engineer that would step you through the, the whole process of integrating Hoops Communicator with your, within your existing architecture or, or building out um, a, a new product using it and that's um, completely unrestricted, so you get all the tools and are able to, to use it, and uh, that's, that's a free evaluation. We we're really encourage you to do that. But again, thank you so much for your time today. We do appreciate that. We know that everyone has busy schedules, and we look forward to talking with you in the future. Uh, last call for questions. Hi, guys. What level of editing workflows do you support? Uh, so, so basically, I think that the, the key here is that we support a lot of different different editing uh, systems. So, what we've added, the question is what what is meant by editing? So, you can the, if, if if the data is on the server, it is in the browser, or in our database. You can you can do all you can move things around. You can change the visibility. You can you can you can change the materials. Basically, you have your complete control over what gets displayed in in, in and, and which subset of the data you want to want to bring in. So that does not necessarily mean that, yeah, that that if you want to build, like for example, like a complete CAD system using our tools, then that that would be a different that would be a different thing. But you have full editing capabilities over the data that that's in, in the browser on the client. And then last question: Are we going to publish a recording of this webinar? Absolutely. So uh, we're going to be working on that today and tomorrow to get it up. It'll be edited slightly, and so yeah, you'll be able to view it, share it. Um, and will be publicly available. Well, that that is all for today. Again, thank you everyone for your time, and we do look forward to speaking with you and working with you in the future.